Hello there. Welcome to the video series on multi-threading in Python programming. Now this is the first video in which I am going to create some threads and I am going to talk about these four topics. And if you have no idea about threads, this video is good enough for you. But I have created a video prior to this where I have explained the concepts about multi-threading application in Python in context of Python. And I have also explained what is GIL, the global interpreter log. Now that video will be interesting for you. You don't need to just go ahead and see that video right now, but I am showing a card over here. Make sure you see that video after finishing this video. So let's go ahead and start and understand how we can create threads in Python programming language. Now I will talk about how you can create threads, how you can give name to threads and their identity. I will also talk about how you can pass parameters within the thread. And I'm also going to talk about how to create threads in an object oriented way by subclassing them. Okay. Now to use thread, you need only one thing from this particular module from threading module. You need to import thread, right? Now I'm using time over here just to make sure that, you know, my function stays there for some time. Time is not required for using multi-threading application, right? So you just need thread from threading. Thread is a class. Now let's go ahead and create a thread Python thread using the built-in thread class. Okay. Now, as you know that every thread has an entry point, your main thread has an entry point, the first function, or you are calling something from the main, the first entry point for the main function. Similarly, each and every thread must have an entry point. Each and every thread must have a function to start with. This is true in all programming languages. This is not unique to Python. Okay. So let me create a function. You can create any function as an entry point function. And whatever you are seeing here is the function that I have created as an entry point function, my thread function. The entry point function of a thread is called thread function. So in this particular thread function, I am printing thread function. I am sleeping for five seconds and I am printing the end of thread function. Okay. This is my function. Now let's create a thread. So here is how you are going to create a thread. You are going to use built in thread class and you are going to specify target as thread function. Target is the entry point function, which is used for creating a thread. Now, if we go ahead and just see the parameters of this particular thread uh, constructor, you can see that there are multiple parameters, three of which we will talk in this video. So first one is group. Group must be none because it is reserved for future use. And I don't know why the first parameter is reserved for future use. There must be a valid reason for that. I don't know about it. So you have to either say none over here as a first parameter. And if you are not providing that parameter, you have to say target so that the Python interpreter knows target means thread function. Okay. So these are the parameters of the thread function and bare minimum, you need to provide a target. You need to provide a target for the thread function. So here is how I'm going to create a thread. Okay. Now creation of thread doesn't automatically mean starting of the thread. A thread is created, but it needs to be started explicitly. Okay. It doesn't mean this line doesn't mean that thread is started and running. Okay. So because of this, there are some functions that are available by which we can see whether a thread is actually running or not. And one of that function is age alive. So right now, what will be the output of age alive? It's false because thread is not running. Now let me start the thread. And if I do age alive again, it will say me true. And once the thread finishes its execution, if I say age alive again, it is going to give me false. Okay. And a very important thing, you can't start the thread again and again. One thread can be started only once. So if you want to call the start function once again, you will get an error, which means that you again need to create a thread. Okay. And then you start. Okay. You cannot call start again and again, you can call start only once for a thread. Always remember this. Okay. Now let's talk about naming of a thread. When you have multiple threads in your system, it's sometimes extremely useful to name them. But if you don't, you know, the Python interpreter will name it for you. So by default, there is a data member called name using which I can see the name of the thread. 
by default it is saying the name of my thread is thread 5 it's by default way of python interpreter the more number of threads you will create it will just increment the number thread 6 7 thread 8 thread 20 anything like that okay now these names are okay if you just have only one or two threads but if you have multiple threads and you want to name it based on what that thread is doing you can do it by providing a parameter called name okay so in here this code is exactly similar to what we did few lines back okay i'm just adding one more parameter saying name equal to learning thread okay thread alive is false thread name is learning thread okay now i need to start a thread by calling the start function and just like all other programming languages if you want to wait for that thread to finish you need to call join so in here i am starting the thread i am waiting for thread to finish you can see a star over here and when the thread finishes the star goes away okay in the earlier case i didn't wait it for thread to finish but in here i have waited for thread to finish and to make sure that you wait for it to finish you have to call join function okay so the most prominent usage of join function is that you know in your main thread you write join at the end of your main thread because you want to make sure that all other threads have completed before you close your main thread otherwise there is a chances of memory leak okay now let's talk about thread identity what is a thread identity think of it as a identity given by operating system the way operating system identifies it so i have created a thread again and by default unless and until thread is started you will not be assigned an identity in here the thread identity is none now the difference between you know thread name and thread identity is that as soon as you create the instance of thread you can assign a name but identity can only and only be assigned once thread starts and once the identity is assigned it is unique it will remain there even if the thread execution finishes so right now you have seen the thread identity is none i am starting the thread and again identity is some number okay let me wait for this thread to finish thread finished but still identity will remain there for that particular thread okay now i'm going to show you one trick you know that you cannot call that thread start function again and again okay you need to again create a instance of that thread class or create an object so how will you know that a thread start is already being called at some place okay here is a trick for that the identity of the thread will not be assigned until and unless the thread is started which means that if thread dot identity is not none and thread dot is alive is false this means that thread has already executed similarly if thread alive is true which means that thread is started and it is currently in execution but this line will tell you that if a thread is already started and finished okay now let's talk about how to pass arguments in the thread function because most of the time when you are writing production quality code you need to pass arguments to the thread function so this is my thread function one i'm taking an argument okay nothing changes over here as compared to the earlier function now to pass an argument we will have to pass it as tuple and here is what the additional parameter looks like so this is my additional parameter now no matter whether i am providing one argument or multiple argument this is the way we are going to do it within a tuple and we have to put comma even if there is only one argument so in here i have passed 200 and if i start i can see that the argument is successfully passed to my thread function now thread function finishes similarly this is a thread function with two arguments and see what i changed over here i am passing argument in tuple as 100 and 200 and if i start the thread i can see that both 100 and 200 is here right so these are the main basic usage of python threads now let's go ahead and talk about an object oriented way of creating threads now how you want to do it is your choice okay there is no specific benefit of using one type over other or one way over other okay it's your choice so if you want to use subclass way of creating python threads and most of the time i have seen people who are coming from other programming languages like java 
they prefer this way but I don't know of any reasons why you should prefer this way but it's all up to you. It's all about your convenience as a programmer. So you want to derive a class, your class from thread which is the base class and your init function will look like this, this super init you need to do and for some reason if you are not aware of these things in my python series I have talked about all these things go ahead and have a look okay now to make sure that your thread runs you have to define a run function okay and whatever implementation we did as a entry point thread function you will do in the run function because when I will call the thread start it will call the run function okay so whatever implementation that was there in thread function put it in the run function consider run as the entry point function okay now this is my class I'm creating the instance of my class and I can start it and again I can join it wait for it to complete and you can see that this particular run function gets called now there is one thing where it turns out to be a bit weird but if you want to pass a parameter there is a bit different way to pass the parameter when you are deriving a class from the thread so in here what I did is that you know I am taking the parameter in the init function the constructor function of my thread and I am setting self dot parameter as parameter and in the run function the thread function if I want that parameter I am accessing that parameter as self dot parameter one so if this is there and I am passing a parameter as a parameter I can see that a parameter is being printed so this is just a bit different way of passing the parameter if you are using a derived class okay there are other ways also but you have to choose and decide okay so that's all everybody that's all for today thanks a lot thanks for watching we will meet again until the next time we meet good day goodbye you take care